And so uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brother Fred as he, he brings, brings us the word this afternoon. The title is Preparing a Sanctuary for the Holy Spirit. And that's a spiritual sanctuary. But thinking about how Jesus taught, he often uh, started with natural examples and then moved us into uh, supernatural things. And so I want to start with uh, talking about something natural, which is a bird sanctuary. What is a sanctuary? A sanctuary is a native, uh, a nature reserve where birds have refuge and protection that they feed them food and they give them water and they have water mm -hmm. to wash in because birds love to bathe in the in the water and in and the so, fountain in the fountains <laughs> and so that's a, a wonderful place and, and it's a place of delight uh with the birds delight uh being there and there's protection and safety and then uh, the person providing the sanctuary uh delights in seeing the birds and and there in the sanctuary that's where we see the uh, presence of the birds and the voice of the birds. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to talk mm -hmm. about then is a sanctuary for the sacred dove, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. A and uh, it's a place of delight. Uh, uh, we know that um, he will, he's in you and he will never leave you nor forsake you, but you can do a lot about uh, his presence and mm -hmm. and uh, letting his voice speak and letting his power be released. And so those are the things we're going to be talking about. Jesus uh, uh, looked at Matthew, I mean, uh, Psalm 37 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of the heart. And we know that Jesus did that because he fulfilled everything mm -hmm. he was supposed to. And, and that was uh, Psalm 37. Uh, and then you look at Matthew 12, verse 18, and, and the father said, behold, uh, my servant whom I have chosen, uh, my beloved in whom I'm well pleased, and I, I find delight. And, and uh, the Passion Translation said, I find all my delights in him. And so what we see in this case is that Jesus is delighting in the Lord. And the Lord is delighting in Jesus, and he finds all of his delight. Now, that's the sanctuary uh, the Lord wants us to build for the Holy Spirit, where we're delighting in him, and he's delighting in us. Uh, it's very important that we build this sanctuary. A lot of people just go around and, and neglect the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you, but... Let's just think about this sanctuary and a sanctuary for the sacred dove where he's delighting in you and you're delighting in him. It's a place where his presence is available and his voice is heard and his power is released. It's a very important place. Uh, so that's what I want to, to talk about today. How do we, how do we prepare such a place? And there uh, two really important uh, warnings uh, in the New Testament uh, about this place and about uh, the, uh, these are verses that you're very familiar with, not grieving the Holy Spirit Amen. and uh, not quenching the spirit. Uh, the spirit, not quenching his fire, not, not restraining his fire. So those are really the two main things that we're going to be looking at. And uh, Ephesians chapter 4 in this long passage, um, verses 17 through 32, in there, it talks about grieving the spirit. And so to understand what grieving the spirit means, it's good to look at what this passage is, Ephesians 4, 17 through 32. It's all about our thought process, our internal thought uh, process. And, and it starts in verse 17 and, and talks about the Gentiles. The Gentiles, are, their minds are futile and their minds are darkened. Their understanding is darkened. And, and then he says, don't be like those people. Don't be like those people. You, you've come into the kingdom. Now, renew your mind. So uh, grieving the Holy Spirit is about what you're thinking about. You grieve him when you uh, are thinking about worldly things and not, not thinking about him. 
You're not focused on those things. And he said, don't let uh, bitterness and anger and wrath, don't, don't let those be uh, among you. Uh, this is what grieving the Holy Spirit is. Now, we know from the Old Testament, uh, God loved Israel. And, and we'll come back to Ephesians in a moment. But it, there in uh, uh, Isaiah 63, uh, it talked about how he loved uh, Israel and uh, the people of Israel and that he, he uh, carried them. Uh, and, and what a beautiful picture there. He loved them and he carried them and he was their savior. And what did they do? They rebelled against him and they grieved the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now you. let's look at the re at his response. He said, I fought against them. Oh, glory. Wow. Now, this is a something we want to heed. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We don't want God uh, fighting against us. Well, God's not mad, but he can be grieved. Well, so what is the opposite of grieving? And that is delighting. And so what are we supposed to do in our sanctuary for the sacred dove is let him be delighted. And, and we are, del he's delighted when we're renewing our mind. Ephesians 4 Hallelujah. says, put off Hallelujah. the old man, put off the old man, put off the old way of thinking and put on the new man. Let your mind be renewed. Let the spirit of your mind be renewed. That's by the Holy Spirit. And, and so you, when you get your thinking lined up uh, with the way God says to think, that's going to delight the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And he's going to move in your presence. You know, the last verse in that passage is uh, Ephesians 4.32. says, be kind one, one to another. another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what it that's what it uh, what grieving is about. And the consequences are serious. We don't want God fighting against us. We know that He loves us. He, yes. He's even carried us at times we couldn't. Uh, go carry on. Ourself. We Amen. couldn't carry ourselves. He's carried us, but we don't want to rebel against him and grieve him, and it's in our thought processes, and then it's even more grievous to the Holy Spirit if we begin to act on evil thoughts, and so our actions lead to sin if we're thinking about evil things, and, and that's even more grievous, so it's grievous just to be thinking about evil things, and it's more grievous to be acting on evil thoughts. Ooh, amen. amen. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That, that's, a, that's a part of your sanctuary. What, what you can do, see, the negative side is the grieving, but the positive side is delighting. Delight yourself in, in the Lord, Lord, and he will delight himself, himself in you, you. Oh, just hallelujah. like Jesus. See, Jesus delighted himself in the Lord, uh, and that's uh, Psalm 37. And then the Lord delighted in him, found all of the delight in him. And that is Matthew 12, 18. And what I see is that as you're praising the Lord and, and delighting yourself in the Lord, he's, his presence is going to be there in a mighty manifested way. And he will find his delight in you. Hallelujah. That's pretty exciting to me. And he finds it when we delight in him. And he doesn't have to leave one of you and go to another one because you're delighting in him. He's going to find all his delight in you. That's why I said in Matthew uh, chapter 12, verse 18. <clears throat> now, that's the way what he said about Jesus, but we are to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. You remember that? Matthew 4 uh, said, uh, Follow me. And I'll put you to work. Well, you know, that sounds just <laughs> like my father. When I was a little boy, he'd just say, come on, we're going to go out here to the, to the, <laughs> to barn. the barn. We're going to get the horses. We're going to go. So come on, well, you just follow me and I'm going to put you to work. He never said I'm going to put you to work, but that's what Jesus said. I'm going to make you fishers of men. So I'm Woo! <laughs> glory. It, it, and see, when daddy told me, uh, come on, we're going to go out here and, and do something. I just went up and got up and went. I, I didn't talk about how many hours is this going to take? <laughs> is, is my lunch going to be uh, provided? How much money am I going to? No, I, I tell you, it, 
that's the way God operates. Just yeah. follow me. Just follow me and I'll put you to work. And, and we'll talk about we'll talk about rewards at another day. But just follow me. Glory to God. It's not about the reward. We just follow him. And Jesus said, I have a little chorus. All right. <clears throat> the Lord gave me this little chorus years ago. It says, Come follow me, follow me, follow me. Come follow me, saith the Lord. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Come follow me, saith the Lord. And I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was good. Okay, so for this sanctuary then, it's going to take attention. It, your sanctuary is going to take attention and care. Yeah. And if you had a bird sanctuary, you couldn't just leave it for weeks at a time and not feed the birds and not uh, water the birds. And when you came back, they might not be there. Or the predators might have come in and eaten them up. And so the sanctuary that uh, you build for the Holy Spirit, that sacred dove, uh, is going to take attention and it's going to take care. And so that's why we go to uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning in 17 through 19, and then uh, eventually verse 23. But 17 uh, says, rejoice always. Mm, mm. 18 says, pray without ceasing. Amen. Uh, 19 says, give thanks in everything. So there's three things that we're to do all the time. It's not, well. Let's go over them again. First one is rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks always so all hallelujah all, these are really more a uh, heart issues uh, the heart issues uh, see grieving not the holy spirit was about thinking what you think and then acting on uh, your thoughts but now we're getting down to verse 19 and quench not the holy spirit don't quench it okay so what does that mean don't put out the fire See, you're carrying a fire. We talked about the fire last week. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're carrying a fire, but here's a verse that says, don't quench. In other words, we could say, don't quench or just extinguish the fire that Ooh, is within you. The fire of yeah, the Holy Spirit that is yeah. within you. Don't, uh, don't restrain the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't keep yeah. him back. And so what I want you to see from uh, 1 uh, uh, Corinthians 6, 19 says, Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, but mm -hmm. some translations uh, say you are a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. So that's sanctuary. So let's don't think about that as being a legalistic place or a religious place. Think about that as, as a place you're, you're providing a sanctuary for the Holy Spirit where it's a delightful place, where you mm -hmm. delight in him and, and he, he delights, delights in you. you. And see, in this sanctuary that I'm talking about, there are really two important things that are going to happen. That's where you hear his voice and his power is released. And Praise God. So Ooh. your sanctuary, you can measure it. You can measure the effect of a thriving sanctuary. And you, and you might think, oh, I've got a thriving sanctuary um, because I know the Spirit will never leave me, nor will he forsake me. But let me tell you, there are other things to consider here. What about his presence? Is his presence being manifested, the glory of God being mm -hmm. manifested mm -hmm. in your life? Are you hearing his voice? That's oh, the way yeah. you measure uh, the success of your sanctuary. We all need to build a sanctuary, and that takes constant care. It takes rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, ceasing. and giving thanks always. And, and, and so if we're not doing those things all the time, then we're not taking care of our sanctuary. We're not attending to our sanctuary. And that's when the fire goes out. Oh, that's, oh, that's a warning. Jesus. Do not quench. Don't, don't extinguish the fire of the Holy Spirit within you. Okay, so... The Spirit is there. I know every person listening to me that the Spirit of God is within you. But what are you doing with him? That's the question. What are you doing with him on a continual basis? Are you building a place of delight where you're delighting mm -hmm. in him and he's delighting mm -hmm. in you? 
Or are you putting him over in a corner and, and letting him pop out when you need him? Oh, I, today's the day I need you, Holy Spirit. Come on out. I, I've kept you locked up back there. Yeah, I mean, you're in me, but I've kept you locked up. We don't want to do that. The, a sanctuary takes continual attention and care. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Uh, in everything. Give thanks. Give thanks. So it's a grateful. These are all heart issues that you are you have a heart of prayer. And, and what happens if you don't pray? If you don't pray, if you don't pray regularly, if you don't uh, pray, then you, then you begin to quench the fire. The fire begins to flicker and, and, and mm -hmm. go out. We don't want the fire to go out. Well, what if you're mad? What if you're just uh, ugly towards people? Uh, <laughs> uh, the fire begins to go down now, don't let bitterness or anger or god know, doesn't like ugly and there's just some things that go on in everybody's <laughs> life and and i'm sure that uh, none of you are exempt even this week that there are things have gone on that may not have gone on the way you wanted them to go on but you can't be bitter and you can't be angry and you can't uh, uh carry wrath against the people uh, or otherwise that flame begins to to flicker oh wow, wow. And, and go out here the lamp of the god, oh, god would go out you, yes we yes. don't want it to go out so we've got two things going on here we want to hear his voice on a continual basis, basis. and so we need to develop this sanctuary and can you just imagine if you were going to build a sanctuary for the birds what time and effort you'd put in to that and how much you would enjoy just being out there and listening because that's where their voice is. That's where you're hearing that's the right, birds singing right. in your sanctuary. And so it's worthwhile oh, it's to give attention to that sanctuary. And, and, and so you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and you, you can release the fire of God at any time. See, we can't just hallelujah, uh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, lock up the fire of God and say, well, uh, I don't need the fire of God today. Um, I, I just wait. I just let it uh, simmer over there in the in the in in a side place, and I'll let it simmer over there until maybe one day I'll need it. But let me tell you, you need the fire of God every day. Every day. Now, are you are you passionate for the Lord? Do you have you built a place of sanctuary, a place of delight, a delightful place where where you and the Holy Spirit spend time together? Because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you need to take care of that sanctuary because we want his voice to be heard there. We want singing to occur in our sanctuary. Yes, I mean. We want the passion to be there and the fire of God to be there in our sanctuary. That's what it's all about. We all are a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit, and what are we doing about it? because we can do two basic things. And, and one is just put the, the spirit over on the, on the shelf and say, just come out when I need you. But I tell you, you need the Lord every day. Every day. And, and we're warned not to grieve the Holy Spirit. And the, the opposite of grieving is delighting. So we are told to delight ourselves in the Holy Spirit and then don't let that fire go out. And it takes continual continual uh, attention to the fire. See, uh, we have a fireplace in the house and, and, and we like to light it on cold nights, cold, rainy, uh, wet nights. Uh, but it takes attention to have a fire going all the time. You, you've got to yeah, feed yeah, it with wood. wood. You've got to move it around. Stir so, it up. Stir it up and make sure that that fire is burning. It's the same in your heart that, that you need that fire burning. And so th there's really two different areas we need to focus on uh, to make sure that the Holy Spirit is delighting in us. And that is what we're thinking about. That we put on the new man, we take off, take off the old man, put on the new man, have our mind renewed, the spirit of our mind renewed by the Holy Spirit. And that's when we delight in him, that's what he's going to do. And then also keep, keep that fire burning. And don't quench the fire. Don't let it go out. Don't restrain him. Let him move as he wants to move. And be quick to respond to what the Holy Spirit says. Mm -hmm. And you'll have a thriving sanctuary where his voice will be heard and his power will be released. Amen. Right, Amen.
I just want to uh, just add a little bit concerning Brother Fred started with the with the birds and having a bird sanctuary. And um, early in the morning, I have found that it's it's amazing to me uh, when you rise up and and just as the sun is is coming up, uh, those birds are out there singing to the Lord. Uh, they are worshiping the Lord. They are giving him glory. And, and I believe that it says that we're to seek him early and, and that we are to, uh, to keep, like Brother Fred said, to keep our fire going. Uh, then we have to, uh, that's where the, uh, the praise and the worship, it stokes our fire. It, uh, it stirs us up and it, it, it keeps the, the fire going on the inside of us and also keeps a place of, of safety for the Holy Spirit as we come into praise and come into worship. You know, this is the time that God is, is, is looking for true worshipers. He's looking for those who truly worship him. And of course, presenting ourselves a living sacrifice unto him uh, is part of our, our service. It's part of our service of worship. Uh, that's what uh, one of the translations says, uh, that it's our it's our time of worship when we present ourselves to him. And as, as a temple of the Holy Spirit, uh, we can, we open ourselves up and yield our vessels uh, to him to, so that the Holy Spirit has freedom uh, to move in us. You know, there's, there's at least, uh, I know of three of the individuals that are watching to, uh, this afternoon that uh, that the cares of this this world and the cares of concerning your family and the cares concerning your finances and the cares concerning what's going to happen next in the world um, all of that has weighed very heavily upon you uh, this week and and I want to just uh, send the word of releasement. Uh, to those of you that have had heavy burdens on you this week, uh, in the name of Jesus, that, that you will just be released of those, those worries and those uh, doubts, those thoughts. Uh, Brother Fred said we're to renew our minds. Uh, that's part of building a, a sanctuary into the Lord. And so uh, this is something that, that I just send forth that releasement uh, to those of you that have had those burdens on you this this past week, and uh, you know the Lord, the if the Lord be for you, who can be against you? And also that your enemy may come uh, at you one way, but he has to leave seven ways. You know when you begin to worship the Lord, uh, then you invite His presence. You say, you know, here I am. Come and be. Uh, who you want to be in me. Hallelujah. And so that praise and that worship is is a very critical. I know um, there was um, on, on Tuesday afternoon, uh, I began to uh, not feel very well and, and we were ministering. I was ministering Tuesday night on a Zoom meeting uh, with the Chinese group that we work with. And, um, and, you know, and I began to, uh, to throw up and I threw up three times and, and we sat down to do the zoom meeting and, and brother Fred said, are you, you know, do you feel like you can do this? And I said, you know, only by the grace of God, can I do this? And so we prayed together and I began to minister the word to this group. And about, uh, well, I got halfway through and I felt it lift off of me. I felt everything lift off of me. And I give the Lord praise for that because that was uh, just, uh, I feel like it was a miracle week for us last week. And I know that some of you uh, have felt uh, some of the same pressure on you and, and the same thoughts uh, about different uh, aspects of your life. And so those are gone. We're going to renew our mind to, to the, the goodness of God. We're going to renew our mind uh, to how he takes care of us. We're going to renew our mind that he is our provider. He provides everything that we need, whether we need clothing, food, finances, a taxi money, 
grocery money, uh, whatever we need, he is our provider. And that's, we, we think on that. We, we renew our mind and we think on uh, the goodness uh, and the greatness of God. And when we do that, then he becomes uh, great in our life. And he be begins to show forth his goodness uh, to us. And so I thank the Lord for what, for what he's done for us this week. And, and also that we can uh, just come and build him a sanctuary 